follow me, there, this is my Twitter. So basically today the talk we'll be giving is on testing like a pro. So we'll be running through basically how to, how to test uh, basically your software and telling you what are the different things that you should adopt or the best practices you should adopt when you're doing testing. So let's start. So, okay, so yeah. yeah, before starting, uh, we would like to to ask you if you know about those very useful commands. Uh, who knows about that command? Okay, nice. And who is using that command? Yeah. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, uh, these are the commands that you should try to forget. Why? Because. Um, Skipping tests is usually not a good practice unless you have a very good reason for doing so. I mean, it could be something like you do not want to be part of your build. I mean, that's one reason, but most of the time you shouldn't be thinking about this at all. So try to get it out of your vocabulary. But uh, I don't really agree. I don't need to test. Uh, I like to test my code in production. You like to test your code in production? Yeah. Well, I mean. This, this, this is possible only if you're Chuck Norris, but let me remind you guys, most of you are not Chuck Norris. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so why, why is testing important? Because testing allows you to, um, when, 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 when the bugs get propagated to production, right? usually it's much costlier than uh, bugs being found in development or, or even before, before development stage. Just for example, right, for Toyota, um, they have an incident where they, they had this problem with unintended acceleration about two, uh, few couple of years ago. So that was about 2009. So they found out that this was actually due to a software bug. And this caused a, a lot of cars being recalled and that eventually cost them about $3 billion. And this is, this is the cost versus if you have found it in, in development, that would, would definitely be much lower. So this, this chart is just basically a highlight of what actually are the cost as, as you go towards production and maintenance. So, this is a sample of, uh, this illustration basically is, is, is talking about how you should build your test cases. So, the foundation of your test should always uh, follow this kind of testing pyramid. You should start with the unit tests first, uh, because those are the easiest tests you can do. So, these tests usually target methods or classes and this, these are the tests that you will be, I mean, you will want to write more to cover all the different various cases that you have. The next kind of test that we'll, talk, we'll be talking about is integration test. So integration test basically is like testing on a component level. So you have basically different uh, multiple classes coming together and you would like to test a group of, uh, a, a group of functionality. So this, this, is, this test usually is slightly slower than unit tests because you need to set up some dependencies but um, they're still significantly faster than uh, the, next, the next step, which is the functional test. So the functional tests are basically what uh, some people will call acceptance, although, although there's a fine line between uh, acceptance or, or, or functional tests. So basically functional tests are tests that as an end user I will be doing. Like you, you, some people would think of it as a manual test, but in an automated fashion. So these tests are usually the, the slowest one that you will probably, I mean, you, when you run it, it will probably take the, the longest time. So let us start with uh, with unit testing. Oh come on, you're not gonna talk about TDD, right? <laughs> I see you guys don't want to talk about TDD. Who wants to talk about TDD? So, uh, is <laughs> so have you guys? Uh, I mean, uh, show a hand. Who, who has heard of TDD? So I think it's like yeah, but no, no, no. TDD is not applicable. Too difficult. So no case to to do TDD. But who has actually tried TDD? I mean. Oh, that's, that's quite a number of you oh, guys. Okay. So, that, that's, so that, that's good. Basically, TDD is a, it's a methodology that's, uh, that's actually pioneered by Ken Beck. So it actually allows you to simplify the design of your, your software. And putting, by putting tests first, right, it actually drives your development work. Um, so probably we can do a short demo on the, Okay, well, on if the like TDD, let's do a demo of TDD. Yeah, yeah. yeah why not? Okay, come on, let's go. So let us select what kind of TDD should we do because I don't see any, any test case that will fix TDD. Okay, so basically we're using Spring Pack Clinic as a, as a, a sample, but we're going to do a simple one. So basically we're using a, a function that most of you guys should know about. It's called A2A2I. 
and you basically offer numeric to integer. So you're going to start by coming up with some test cases to drive this development. So let's say you have a simple method that converts the alphanumeric to integer, right? So what, what should you do first? So let's, let's think about what we want to do for, for this test case. Probably we should start a simple test, maybe something like... Um, <coughs> Can you increase the font? Oh, it's too small? Oh, okay, let me switch to presentation mode. That'll be. Okay, this is good. Yeah, okay. So let's start with a simple test. Maybe you should call it um, converting a single character test. Convert single digit char to in. Okay. <coughs> And I'm using this library for a cert J. So maybe we do something like this. Okay, let's start with the simple one. So as, as you can see, right, when you run your test, basically it doesn't even compile, right? So it's red. So that, that, that's, that's the point of it. So the point is to convert this red to green. So how do you how do you want to change this so that it passes? Okay. So my job is to write the implementation, right? Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Okay. So where is the? <gasps> can you take me to the implementation? Okay. There you go. Okay, so so basically, I will write the the implementation to make the test pass, and then we'll see. So, what was the name of the lesson? Pass it. Okay, like this, and then you gave me a string. Yeah. So basically, as you can see, the test actually drives what, what's the name that you, you give for your for implementation. All right, so return one. So the test will be passing. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the shortest way you can get it to pass, <laughs> which, which is actually the, the point of it. Of course, when you, when you do something like that, it passes. Because it's, yeah. it's the shortest route. It's the shortest route. So, uh, give, it a give it a round of applause. So, so the guy that's writing the test right right now would think about okay. So you got it to pass, babe. So yeah. I'm gonna give you something more difficult than this, right? Oh. <laughs> so let's let's try something like. Yeah, okay, I'll give you a couple of, of test cases. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's try with a couple. So, okay, we expect this to fail. It's more complicated. Yeah. Can you switch back to the implementation? Okay. okay. Right. So, I think I have to make my function works on any case. So, how about so, this? So now you have to start scratching your head. <coughs> How about this? <laughs> so you can start running the test by control shift. Okay. Okay, so it's passing. Alright. So pass? Okay. So well done. So you got a single character working. So okay, that's so it's working. <coughs> so that's where you have to think again. So after you have passed the single character, right? What's next? Probably you have to think about. Maybe he has to get the implementation to work on more than one character, right? Oh, okay, yeah. right. So let's let's yeah, do right. something like that. Okay. Okay. 
So as you see, as I, as I write my test, right, I'm trying to get it to be more descriptive because um, ultimately this is like a documentation of what are your requirements. So as, as the more descriptive your test is, the more, is, the more easier it is for other people to understand your code. So, uh, let's start with a simple one. So then we'll now try to Okay, the so, so now I have to make some kind of loop to loop uh, on each number and I think I will store the results in some variable. So let's start like let's start like this and then oh, make a mistake. Okay, and uh, now I think I have to <coughs> multiply my number by 10 on each loop and to add Current number. So as as you are rewriting this, right, you're thinking about how you're going to refactor this code and, and make it uh, past the previous test as well. So there's also some regression testing involved because the previous test actually covers the, the case for single digit. <laughs> There is this compilation return result, right? Return result. Return result, right? Yeah, result. Okay, so let's try. So let's see whether that passes. Okay, run this one. <coughs> so great. So as you can see. Yep. So both the regression test uh, pass as well as the current test. So I mean, this, this is basically the idea of uh, TDD. So as, as you can see, it's not as difficult as you guys think it is. I mean, if it's especially applicable for small methods or things that are not really big, but it's, you can you can apply for single methods and classes. So let's let's you want to you want to go on? So yeah. Let's let's so, yeah. yeah to, to summarize what what we just saw. Uh, Applying TDD will help you thinking about your design because if you want to go to the full method at once, maybe you will have to think more. But if you start with a small test and you improve it step by step, uh, the implementation will be a, a more very easier to do. So that's the first part about why TDD is very nice. So the one of a good thing with TDD is that you don't have to write a lot of documentation because by reading the unit test, you understand how the method works. So it helps with the documentation. Yeah, and as this documentation is always uh, is always real and always working because you know if you write it on a on a on a Word document, you will get outdated. But this documentation actually is tied up to the code, so it always works. So you know that it's actually doing the correct thing. And if you want to, to have a good uh, TDD pattern, you just have to follow the steps that we just saw. You write an implementation, it fails, and you have to make it work. And then you, you improve the test. So this is a red, green, red, green pattern. So you just have to follow this. Yep. So you, if you follow this pattern, slowly your code will start to evolve. As you add in more tests, uh, and do you, which revolves around your requirements, your implementation will start to re, uh, evolve as well. So next time your boss asks you to prepare a test plan for him, 
Yeah. With TDD, you don't need a test plan. The test yeah. plan is the unit test. Yeah. Okay. So, I would like to explain a little bit about what, what a unit test toolkit they can have. So basically, we have a Mokito. Um, have you guys heard about Mokito? So it's, it's a mocking framework that um, is very handy when you're writing unit tests. So basically, it can help you mock you know, certain dependencies that you have in your methods. And included in Mokito is, what is a, a class called Whitebox. So Whitebox is something that allows you to inject uh, objects into your classes so that you can actually um, have, you don't, need, you, need, you don't need to create setters for your, for your classes, which might actually uh, interfere with the design that you, you intend to have. So Whitebox allows you to inject objects into it directly. And there's also a very cool library called AssertJ. AssertJ is basically uh, something like your J unit assertions, but basically it allows you to assert like, uh, into, I mean assert stuff like collections and allow, allow you to do a lot of even Java 8 Lambda stuff. And there's an interesting plugin called More Unit. So this, this More Unit plugin actually allows you to generate uh, test templates easily like what we, we have done just now. So we are able to switch between your test and your implementation uh, pretty quickly. If you have IDE, right, and you install this more unit, it actually eases you, uh, your development uh, for tests significantly. So let me, let me just do a demo on this. So I have a test case. Mm. So, um, so basically, uh, in in the spring pack clinic, right, we have one rest method that actually relies on um, a clinic service. So this clinic service is actually used to find, find from the database an uh, owner by ID. And this basically is a, a REST endpoint for, for you to, to communicate with this clinic service to retrieve back the owner. So basically, so, when, when you would write a unit test, you don't want to reach the database. So that's why we are going to mock the database so it won't reach the DB. Yep. So, let me show you an example. So you can actually create a mock clinic service. So this is basically our, our clinic service that we are going to be inject into, <coughs> into the unit test. So just to show you guys what is the unit test, the unit they are testing. So this is the REST controller I was showing you early on. So we're going to be injecting this clinic service, the, this mock clinic service into this unit. <coughs> so this white box is the utility I was talking about. So basically with this white box, right, you can actually set the internal state which basically is uh, replacing whatever is whatever property is within this unit uh, with the object that you want to place inside. So in this case, it will be our mock object that we want to place in. So this is called clinic service. <coughs> okay. So if I try to run this test, it should still pass. Okay. Okay, so uh, basically I'll, I'll just try to create something else. So with this Mokito, you can actually set up behaviors. So whenever you have a method that's being uh, called on your mock, 
you can at least verify that it's being called. So for our implementation, our clinic service is actually calling this uh, find owner by ID, right? So you can actually put a you can put a verification here and verify that your mock has has uh, your mock clinic service. Has this method called? So it can be any any integer. So I'll run this test again to make sure that it's passing. Oh no, it's not. Find the owner by. Okay, it's because. There's a condition here that says that if the owner ID is not now. So actually this actually King Service is the one that is calling this safe owner. So I'll let me change this implementation. So it should be safe owner. Wanted but not in the Oh, I need to call the, the unit, right? Okay, so. So basically, after you have invoked your unit, right? So you can actually verify that this <coughs> this service is being called. Right. So one one other thing you could do is actually to have an argument kept off, which actually can capture what what is being passed to the to the unit uh, to the mock to the mock object itself. So let's say if you have an object here that you want to capture for the safe owner, you want to know what is the what is what is the value that you're passing into the to the mock object? Sorry. So sorry, I'm sorry about it. So basically if you if you have argument capital, you can actually capture this this argument. So So the, the object that you want to capture that is being passed to the mock object is actually your owner class. So you can actually create this argument capital. So now, after you have captured the argument, you can actually check that this is the correct argument that you have captured. Let me shut it off first. Sorry about that. So, uh, so this is a captured owner. It's actually. So after you have, you have actually captured this argument, you can actually assert that what you've passed into your unit is the same as what you've captured. So this is one way that you can assert. Okay. So I need to let me extract out this owner so that to make sure that this, this is the same guy that we are capturing. Thank you. 
So running the test, we can see that we can, we can assert that the captured owner in the mock, right, is actually the same as the one that we have passed in, into our implementation. So if you, to verify that this test is actually <coughs> valid, let's say if we don't, if we don't use the same <coughs> owner that, we, that is passed in from the method, we construct a new owner, we expect this to fail. I mean, this is, this is just an example of, of a test. Let's say you have, you have done some changes to your implementation and you decided to construct a new owner and pass it to the method. So we expect this test to fail instead. So this is one way to, uh, to mock the, the services that you have dependencies on. So let's go back to the slide. So as you can see, uh, there's also assert J that we, we've used. Assert J is basically what I've used early on in the, in the implementation. So there's a lot of methods that you could uh, use it for assertions. As compared to, to, to J unit, right, you have assert equals, and that's about as the limitation that you have. But for assert J, you can see that there's so many different kinds of, um, of assertion. I mean, it's, it's actually much richer than using just J unit alone. Okay, so maybe I'll hand over to Alan okay. to talk about. Yeah, I'll talk about the, the database testing. Sometimes in your application, you, I mean, not, not sometimes, often you are reaching a database and making some queries. But this is uh, the code that we don't often test. And this is problematic because sometimes you have a problem because the query is not returning the result that you are expecting. And there are some, some techniques to, to test uh, your DAOs. Everyone knows about DAOs, right? Okay. So with Spring, we will see that you have some method to, we have some way to, to test that your SQL is running correctly and running into, a, into an in-memory DB. So, who knows about HTTP? Okay. Okay. So we will see how to, to set up uh, an HTTP DB in your Spring project with a, a different profile, and we will see how to test your, your DAO. So we have a demo right now. Yeah. Can you switch to? Can you can you exit that mode? We go back and see. And how can I see the, the explorer? I can go to the program. Okay. Which file do you have? Can I put it for you? It's okay. So. Who is using Spring Boot uh, in this project? I mean, okay. So. Spring Boot works the same as Spring, but it loads for you of configuration by default. So I will be using Spring Boot for the demo. If you're not using Spring Boot, it works the same with uh, classical Spring. So I'm not sure everyone see, but anyway, if you if you want, we can you can go on my GitHub and check out the the source code later to to run it again and, and make sure everything is working. So for the demo, we will be using Spring Data JPA. It's uh, generating instant repositories, so you don't have to write SQL. <coughs> and um, the interesting part to see is that we have a production profile and a development profile. And the difference between those profiles is the DB. Inside the production profile, we can see that we will connect to a remote MySQL DB. So this is the, the MySQL DB. And I created a test profile, and with that, with this test profile, I'm saying that <coughs> I will run an in-memory HTTP DB. So in that way, I won't impact a real DB. I can do my test on an in-memory DB. So when my test will start, Spring will create a HTTP DB. It will load uh, some SQL scripts. This this is here. So I can create my my model inject some Jumi data, I can run my test, and when my test stops, everything is destroyed. <laughs> so this is the good part. 
So I have my init scripts in some folders. So the the, the SQL is different because um, between MySQL and HDB, um, the syntax is a bit different. So we have already some implementation of uh, of a service. So let's say, for example. We have a clinic service, and we have some method that calls repositories to make some queries in the database. So this is the part we are going to test to make sure the, the SQL runs correctly. So I will go in the test package, and this is this one, right? Okay. We can go back to the, um, it's a presentation mode. It's good of you. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So the first thing we are going to do is put an annotation to say I'm going to run this test with string. I'm just saying that to run this test, I want to load the Spring Boot configuration. So basically, it will load the same configuration that's in the, the production uh, profile. So I will have the, the same injection, the same objects, everything is the same except the database that will be an in memory database. Then, I have to tell to tell Spring that I will load the the test profile. So if you remember, the property file was application testproperties So by putting test, Spring will read that file, and then the the HTML DB will be loaded. So if you want to do many profiles, you just uh, follow the same syntax. You do an application dash whatever you like, and you can load that profile inside. This is not active. This is active profile. Yeah. Just okay. Right. The last thing we are going to do is to put a transactional annotation. So by putting the transactional annotation, it's saying that between all the, the tests we are going to, to write, we will persist the SQL. Because by default, if you put transactional, you can insert some data in the database, and between each test, data will be resetted. There will be a rollback by default. So for, the, for this test, I'm saying I just want to, to commit. Okay, so let's write um, the first test. So I want to test that I can find the, the owners in my, in my database. Yeah. Okay. So... For that, I need to, to inject my service. So let's say, for example, I want to inject the clinic service. So this is how you usually do when you want to inject a class managed by Spring. So it's the same for the test, and because we, we said we want to run with the Spring configuration, uh, Spring will uh, instantiate all the beans and will inject that bean in my test. So now, 
Okay. I mean, the collection. Collection of the. Uh, yeah. Board. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Let's use the best keyboard. Okay. Nice. So now I can call my service and I can say, for example, file owner by last name. And I know that in my DB I have that that person. <coughs> And then I can just Oh, you need a you need a test annotation. Yeah, right. Okay. So basically, it takes some time to instantiate because uh, Spring will load all the bin and all the configuration. So as you know, it takes uh, a few seconds. It creates the DB, it initializes the DB, and then it will run my test with the service, and then. I make sure that in my DB, I have two people with the name Davis. So this is the case because I have an init script that is inserting Jumi in my DB. But let's say, for example, you want to test many DAO, you can inject, uh, you can insert uh, an owner and then make sure that the owner is existing in your DB. And the good part is if you run this on Jenkins, it will work because you are not reaching a real DB somewhere. So I will just show a quick second example. So I'm going to delete someone. So I'm going to delete this guy, sorry for him. <laughs> and then, yeah, I should I copy this one? Um, okay. Yeah, I will copy this one. So my second test is I'm deleting Davis and then I'm querying Davis and I hope there is zero Davis because I deleted it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So this is just an introduction about how you can test your DB. Don't hesitate to, to do that. Yes. You have dependency between your test cases. Can you say that again? You have dependency between your test cases. So if you change the order, you need to ask all if I change my owner in one method, it will be changed in the second. So if you call the second method, it works. Yeah, so, okay, so basically you have to deal with that putting... Uh, there is an annotation in JMI to say I want to order my method, my name, for example. And then you have to put uh, your name uh, with... Uh, alphabetical order. Yeah, yeah, alphabetical order. I think uh, every test case is supposed to be individual, so... Right. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's correct. Yeah, that, that you, you're correct. But this is the way if you want to test, let's say for example, you, you want to test a, a different operation that are incremental, you don't have any choice. You have to do like that. But in most of cases, uh, the test should be atomic. You should run it uh, regardless of the order. So for example, here, the bonus test or something that often 
if, if I want to have another, I will just uh, rename my method uh, with a one, a two, or with A, B, C, and I, I can put uh, a commit annotation. I can put something like that. between my method and then it will be to be committed for the next method. But you have to respect an order. Okay. So the database is filled for, for each test case. It's, it's regenerated v initialized. It's, it's initialized when you... No, it's it initialized when you launch this test case because Spring initialized it and <coughs> then it's the same DB uh, for all the tests yeah. you're going to run. You okay. can... Before class... You can do that. I mean, later yeah. you go, you will touch on that. You can actually use notations like before class or yeah. use a class rule to actually say that. If you want, you can run a clean script, a clean, a cleaning script. Uh, you have the multiple way to do what you want. There is a lot of annotation to do that. Okay. okay. So uh, then, thanks for the demo on the database testing. So next, next we go on to the integration test. So basically, integration test is just five minutes. I mean, yeah. So uh, I'll just quickly run through this. So integration yeah. test basically is the next layer on top of unit test. So what we have is actually you need to set up certain services that your integration test requires. It could be a DB or it could be some message queues or it could be some, uh, some external uh, HTTP service that you require. So we can <coughs> yeah, you can even use Docker containers if you want to emulate a service. And for example, you have Docker image of the REST services. You load do the Docker image. You have the Maven target. To, to run the, that, that container, then you do your test on the Docker container and you stop it after the test and that's all. Yeah. This is a way you can emulate services. And, and you have a lot of ways to, to emulate uh, distant services, so don't hesitate to use it in your integration test to, to test that all layers are communicating well with each other. Yeah. Okay. So th this, this is the thing that you're mentioning, right? So basically for you to have a consistent state when you're running your integration test, you can actually use uh, before or you can use the rule uh, which is provided by JUnit for you to set up some data beforehand or to make, make make sure that you have something clean up before you run your test. Um, so, so what's the difference between a, a before rule and a before and a rule? So before is basically something that you put on, on the test itself, whereas rule is something that you can ex externalize into a class and which applies before you run each of the tests. And the same goes for before class and class rule. So these are, the, these are basically the tools that you can use, the notations that you can use to to run your integration test. <coughs> yeah, so I'll just go right to, actually we have a demo, but I think we, we just go straight right to the functional test. We don't have time for tests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so for, for, well, for functional tests, uh, we have Selenium. I mean, Selenium is actually uh, used for web testing. So there's many, many ways to run Selenium. You can use uh, Selenies, uh, you can use recorded tests through a plugin. You can use JavaScript or you can use Java as well. So for this case, actually, we have some demos for this written in JavaScript. Maybe we just run through it quickly. Um, so the advice for running functional tests is basically to run it after your unit and your integration test. Because usually unit tests and integration <coughs> tests are the, the, the test that runs fast. Um, it, it should be part of your development workflow. But for functional tests, right, basically sometimes the scale of functional tests can be, it can run for hours. So you don't want it to be part of your build. I mean, you don't want to just run a build and then you go, you can have coffee and have half a day off, basically, before you come back to, to look at your test results. So this, this is what I mentioned. So separating functional tests from dev workflow, if it makes sense. So you must also be sure that uh, when you're writing functional tests, it's, it's the critical path that you, your application will take. I mean, don't try to test everything using functional tests because you, do, you don't have the, the luxury of testing every single path. So only test the, the important uh, critical paths that your application will have. Yeah, and try to target the environment close as close as possible to production. Because there are some cases where when you try to run it uh, on an environment that's not so much production-like, you might have uh, surprises when you actually run it. Like, for example, if you have a load balancer, right? Sometimes you, you have session state information that is lost when you, when you load balance, but you can't test it when you have a single server running there. So maybe you should go quickly to, to this. Uh, just, we just run through this. Uh, yeah, just, you just have to understand that if you want to, to run those tests, uh, you have a Maven plugin, and you, 
where you can say just run the, the comma, just be test, and it will run in your build. Yeah. It's not very well. So I, I mean, a lot of us are Java developers, but sometimes we ignore JavaScript tests, right? But actually, you can actually integrate it as part of your Maven build as well. So we, we might have some JavaScript component inside your Spring application. So you can make use of this. Uh, this Maven plugin is actually pretty good. So you can actually download NPM, your Karma, and all, all the dependencies that JavaScript requires into your, into your project. And you can start to execute uh, like JavaScript uh, grunt tasks or, or Jasmine tasks. You know. So there's also another, another tool called Protractor. It's coming from AngularJS. Um, we can actually use it to run functional tests. So I was talking about functional tests being run on Java. So there's also JavaScript uh, way to, to run functional tests. So to summarize the presentation, some useful tips. Uh, don't forget to to follow the, the pyramid, do the unit testing first. These are the most important. Then if you have time, go with the integration test, test the DB and the other layers. And please don't forget the front-end test. Don't forget the front-end developer. It's very important to test that the, the workflow is working, working well. Uh, this is a question people often ask. Do I have to, to test everything? So obviously, no. Sometimes you will have some layer that are just pass through to another layer. Don't waste your time uh, testing this. Okay? This is useless. This is just a function that's called another function. No need to be tested. And of course, uh, if you have some metrics in Sona, uh, take some time to exclude the, the generated code because it will uh, lower your code coverage. So it is very useful as a quick fix. So let's say your boss wanted yeah. to raise the, the <laughs> test coverage, right? This yeah, is one quick way to do it. the boss, we want 100% of coverage. Hey, come on, we, we don't need 100%. So just start by removing all the generating code and the useless layers. And then your code coverage will be more accuracy. So finally, yes. Yeah. yeah, so this is what happened. Someone told me I need 100% like <laughs> This is not possible. Okay, so I hope you guys uh, have a good testing uh, session and <coughs> may all your tests pass. Yeah. This. <laughs> Don't disable the test. Okay, the first slide is the most important. Never disable your test. <laughs> Maybe should, should we run through a like a? Do we have a, like? Do we have two minutes? minutes? Okay, we can do two questions. We? Right. You can do two questions. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you guys got any questions? I mean, regarding testing. No. They love tests. <laughs> I think they have everything covered. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. that's that's all.